Good evening. Good evening. It is a blessing and a great opportunity for me to be with you again. This is my third trip to this church. Uh, but second trip to the Mission Festival. I bring all the best greetings from the people back Haiti, especially the people in Pretty Guav we are serving. Whenever I come up here, I come on behalf of the church, the people of God back there, and on behalf of the children and all of them that have no opportunity to meet you and to fellowship with you. So I bring all the greetings and I take back all. In fact, I, I do thank you for your hospitality, for your generosity, and for the spirit of fellowship that we have here and we have a special time to fellowship together. As you all know, I'm Edisonville from Haiti. I have a son of 17, he's going to be 18 years old, 20 years since I got married, 20 years since I've been serving the people in, in Pretty Guav, Haiti, as a pastor. So it's just good for me to be with you. One, it is, it, for me it is a special time of the year, special season of the year. Up to what I can understand about the Mission Festival, as we focus on what God is doing all over the world, and we don't come over here just to preach, but we come here to share with God's people. Uh, we are working in different ways all over the world. We are one family in the Lord, but it's just good sometimes to, to join together our spirit and be in flesh, you know, to share God's love, to share a, what God is doing in your ministry as one body of Christ we have different gifts. So God can use me this way, use you in another way, and we come together, you know, to share. And I can say we do, we do, we do be stronger after this festival mission. Am I right? Stronger in the Lord. We are listening to each other. We are learning more and more from each other. So uh, we could be we could be stronger in the Lord. Uh, as we are looking out all over the world, things are are turning around, and definitely people could find out that there is no hope in the world outside. The hope people can get, it is just in the Lord, right? Just in the Lord. So, for me, it's time for each one of us to renew our commitment that we have made to the Lord. Right? You agree with me? We commit to serve the Lord. 
And the first commandment mentioned about loving God. How? With all our heart. Right? All our soul. All our strength. And the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, sometimes it seems that we go away from that. Uh, we have too much things to take care of. We have too much things to care of. And it seems that sometimes we stay away from this. But let me tell you, I feel deep in my heart that it is time for us to renew our commitment, commitment to the Lord. And as we have the Word of God, we have ministers to minister to us. As we have people that we are learning from each other, we have things to do more and more, day by day, dedicate ourselves to the Lord. And in this, we could serve the Lord, serve God's people, and be in fellowship together. And we can harvest the world, because we have a lot to do. I do, like any other missionary, I do share with you some of my testimonies. I have a lot. But uh, God's been doing a lot in my life. And you know, whatever God does in your life, He does it for other people to, He does it to draw other people to him. Sometimes people could uh, doubt God. They don't realize who they are serving. How great is God? How great things he can do? How he can use anyone in a mighty way God doesn't care about who you are, provided you could dedicate your life to Him. He wants people to, you know, to use them as His servant and to help other people. So, this time of the year, I mean, this mission festival we have up here, I think sometime in life you feel worthless. I mean, you, you, you look around you, you eat every day, you, you go to work, you go to school, you do all kind of stuff. But there are things that you think you need to do. You still have something you need to do. And through this mission festival, as we are listening to uh, several missionaries, uh, we could uh, find our mission field somewhere or somehow uh, to, find, to find you in something that really will sustain forever. So, I just praise the Lord, I can be here. It is easier for you to go down Haiti than for people in Haiti to come up here. Uh, because Haiti and America, they are different. Before the earthquake 2010, Haiti was the poorest country of the West Hemisphere. You can imagine after the earthquake, a lot of people lose their job, 
a, a buildings collapse, a people died, thousands of people died, and a lot of children without mother, without father, and it become worse. And to restore the country, it is a slow process. In fact, a, whatever it takes, in Romans 8, 28, God works everything for the good of His people. And He does that every day. Every day He does that. He works everything. A, you are on your way, something comes, it seems bad in front of you, and God just turn it around and change everything. He does that every day. So I'm here uh, on behalf of the people back there. I was five years old when God called me to serve Him. Five years old. Uh, this is kind of a blessing for me. Uh, my parent, my father sent me to Haiti to my grandmother. We were three boys. You know, it was hard for my grandmother to take care of us. Then, I got to meet a pastor in the street in Port-au-Prince, and God made a way for me to meet him somewhere, and also to prepare me for, to serve his people, as I'm doing today. I met the pastor, I got appointment with him to because he wanted to adopt me as, as his son. And we went to him. He talked with my grandmother. And finally, he decided to accommodate me and my two other brothers to his orphanage. It was there I was in that orphanage. And it was just a way God was doing, you know, with me, for me to serve His people. He was preparing my heart. I know not too much in the world. Since then, I am at church. They teach me. Uh, we have all kind of meetings with the kids. I go at church until 22 years old God was going to call me to minister to the kids. In my life I would never wish that wish to become a pastor because life is too difficult in Haiti. Being a pastor in Haiti it is not just to serve the people, we share the word and some advice, but you do share yourself. Share yourself, uh, all what you have does not belong to you or your family, it's for the people. Uh, this is something that I experience all my life in the ministry. 22 years old, God called me. He didn't call me to anybody. He just talked to me. Talked to my heart, as he can talk to anyone's heart, to serve his people. You know, the way God does things, a uh, it could be difficult for people to understand the way God can talk to people, you know. Uh, he just 
touch your heart and ask you to do this, to work in this, to minister to this, to, to do this or that. Just talk to you. You feel you got talking to you. And I didn't want to start because I, I know that would cost a lot. Until I had a pastor in the congregation after a Bible study meeting, he called me and told me that I have to start doing whatever God put on my heart to do. And I found out it was from God, what I felt. And I said, I'm going to start with the kids. One of the things that I can prove is the children that I used to serve, to teach. And you know, the way I used to do it, not only to, 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 uh, to help them, to, uh, to teach them, but at each meeting we, we have with the kids, I have to buy a bag of, a, a bag of cookies or a bag of uh, candies. In order to attract them, you know, share with them. And I try to have all kind of activities with the kids, uh, help them to stay at church, teach them how much they have to love the Lord and serve Him and dedicate their life to the Lord and do not think about going to the world. There are so much things that could attract the kids at church, uh, even old people, but uh, they, they have to go to school, they have to go to college, everywhere, but there is a seed that's supposed to plant in them. You sow what God you know, asks you to sow in the kids, and when they are growing up, you know, they will, they will uh, you know, sow in other kids. So this is the way God uh, started with me in the ministry. For sure I went to school to learn. I went to Bible school. Got paper everything but you know just to get paper from a college or you know a Bible you know a school it doesn't enough the call from God is another thing. So, I got to start with the kids. And my pastor used to send me to some other places in the mountain to serve, to preach. I play several instruments. A saxophone is my favorite. I didn't come with my saxophone this time because I got a surgery last June. I tried to stay away for a period of time of the saxophone, but I play the keyboard, I play the drum and other instruments. And I used to go to the countryside with an accordion. All play the accordion, play and sing, you know, Enjoy the people. There are some places I go. Uh, when I got a, I remember I went somewhere and I got a, 11 people. I go to the mountain. I go to several places and invite people to come to the church. And when they come, when I went back to, to Port au Prince and told my pastor that I got a, 11 people, he said, where did you get? Eleven people. Other ministers used to come, they, they got uh, five to six people, but you got uh, eleven people. Where did you find them? I said, well, I, when, I, where, when I go up there, I don't stay just where they put me to stay. I go to several uh, 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 houses and talk to people and invite them to come to the church. And try to attract them, you know, and to have the church to grow. So, I do that. 
26 years old, I got to, I got married, and, and I was added to the ministry. One month later, I added to the ministry and started to serve the people in Petit Guav. Petit Guav is about 40 miles from the capital of Haiti, Port-au-Prince. I live, I used to live in Port-au-Prince, but I had to go to Petit Guav and share with the people, start with a Bible study meeting. And they go up, they go up, the numbers, you know, in numbers they go, and people used to come to port au -Prince all the time, and I had to start uh, serving them on Sunday, have Sunday service. But sometimes it's just good, sometimes it's just bad. One of the main problems I used to have is financial problem. Uh, to serve the people, you have no, no income at all, sometimes no job, and you do do the job. So this is something that uh, I really cannot explain. But uh, God help us. Whenever God call you, he would help you to to, to to work it out. So finally, it's been 15 years from the time I started with the ministry. 15 years I've been suffering a lot. Uh, share with the people. Sometimes some of them have no opportunity to pay even one Haitian dollar to pay tap tap to go to church. I have to work in the heart of the people, you know, to help each other until 2008 through missionary trips. I met Mom Becky, a pastor Chester Fisher. They come from, they came from West Virginia to go to Haiti. Every year they go to Haiti. Uh, it doesn't matter whatever denomination, they join together and go on mission trip. They help people down there. They do clinic. They build churches and else and help in several ways. Had to meet them a because my pastor, Pastor Preval, he had me there, called me to translate for, for the medical team. And since then, most of their hearts, you know, were focused to me. And when they inform about my ministry in Pedigwav, they ask questions to me, and I explain to them, Finally, it happened that a, they say, I cannot help you a, by yourself, but I could help you to come up the States and you could meet some other people that could support your ministry and that could be a help for the people you are serving. And you know, since then, a, God He's been doing a lot in the natural, like in the spiritual. 2009, I made the first trip to the state. God made, made a miracle. We had no church building. And I had a pastor offered me a church building because he's, he was getting older. And it happened that I told him I, can't, I could not afford to get uh, that building. It was not too big, but anyhow, the first trip I made to the state, God used just a little church to, in Pennsylvania to provide to 
by the church building. That church building was going to collapse in one year later in 2010 by the earthquake where 33 people got escaped. It was a miracle. I didn't know what God was going to do when the guys uh, came to us, they went right after the earthquake to Haiti, talked to me, and I said, well, uh, I don't know what to do, but I know the Lord that made it. He knew in the past that it was going to take place. He knows what He has in mind for us. And I prayed, and I got from God, you know, how the building was going to be. And we are not going just to have it. God told me that you are not going to have just a church building for your congregation, but you're going to have a community center. You know, I didn't understand. I just wake up at night and draw what I saw in the vision. And when the guys went down Haiti, I shared the vision to them. It was not up to me. I believe it was up to God. And praise God, it was from God. When people from up here that wanted to help, they didn't want to stand behind something that God is not with. I'm pretty sure of that. And we had a meeting in Farmington over there. And I have two people that were there at that time. Brother uh, Larry and his wife. And they gathered together to think, to find out if it is really God's vision for us to have a building down Haiti at our place. We had no enough land. We had no much land at all. But I had the vision. Most of the time, I'm, sh I'm sharing with the, uh, to the people and I look down below and see the building. And I know that all things belong to God. And whatever God says, he can do it. I remember I had the guys to stay to, to discuss together how they were going to do if it was true God's vision and have to be in one place with Larry's wife. We drain our hands together and we pray. Uh, you know, for any one of us, God can work any miracle. Things could seem difficult, could seem, you know, really bad away. But God is still God. And He is the Almighty God. We praise His name all the time. We sing, we praise His name, we read it. But He is, he is the God. God of all. And you know, we had no much land, nothing, no money. God just provided. I mean God provided. After the earthquake, we, we've made a lot of progress that we've ever made in the past 15, 16 years. From 2010 to 2013. We have the, a building, anyhow, for the people to gather. We have about 200 people on Sunday service. I have some pictures, I have some video I came with. And we 
have a school warning because you know God had put on my heart to minister to the kids as I was raised in an orphanage I know the situation an orphan in Haiti is not just a child that is motherless or fatherless but you can have your mother and father and they cannot afford to take care of you. You still need someone to, to take care of you. So now, we, after the earthquake, we started a school. Because people in our community, they asked for that. A lot of children could be in the street without school. And we started a school. It was by faith. When I had to start it, I had no money from anybody. Just I could come up here and I got some offering. I said I do start with the school for the kids. And I use it to, to pay the teachers and to help. Sometimes I help with uniform and else. And feed the kids as much as we can. Then you know, up to now, life is really strange, different from 2010. We have at least 150 children at school back home now. And we started with 42 children the first year, 2010. And we have people to start helping us. We have the church building. Uh, even though we have a lot to do, more, we still need to continue to work on that. And one of the most important things I had in my heart, it was to help the orphans. Because I remember when I was a little boy, someone, you know, called me and I went to the Lord, have Jesus as my Savior, and I, I can do something for others. And there are children I used to teach, they become pastors, and several parts in the world, I have them when I am in touch with them. They tell me about what I have sown in their life and for them to stay at church. So my dream was to, not only to help the children, feed them, but to be able to accommodate children at home, have a place for them. And you know, up to now, we have, back of the church, at the site, we have a, an orphanage. We name it House of Hope Orphanage. We don't accommodate children yet in it, because it is not done at all, but it is up. And we have the picture here. People from up here, they went to Haiti, they got a team. In six days, they put it up. I did the foundation, and they put it up in six days. They cover it, and I do the, the metal work and other stuff. I do the septic, and they have to go back to Haiti this coming November 7th to do the plumbing and the electric in it. And of course, I will have to plaster it at all and paint it. And early in the new year, we will be able to accommodate at least 12 children. So, those are great things God has done. If, uh, you know, prepare life, you know, for the future. Uh, it is something great in the eyes of God. So, we still have planned to have a clinic at the site. 
we had someone that people from up here are helping to go to school, to college. He's an engineer now, a Wilbur. He was the one who went to our place and got the global plan, plan for the site. Where we have the school, the orphanage, the church, and got provided for, even for water, we, we got water from the spring, thing, thing which really difficult. We had it from there and we're just working. We're just working and keep on working until the last chapter of my life. This is my dream. So, since most of, the, of them down there cannot come up here to share or to, you know, to share their testimony, something like that. I'm here in flesh and share. And I, what I do is to look for sponsors to help the kids to come to school, to have a lunch a day, and to provide uniform. So we, we have like a sponsorship, a scholarship program for people that would like to sponsor a kid, a, I mean involved somewhere. A, a, this is kind of an opportunity for anyone that would like to do something for the children back there, even for the children that's supposed to come to the orphanage. But uh, we're just looking for sponsors and hope that God could bless anyone. We have some good people that are willingly, you know, helping with that. So, uh, but together we can do the job, I can't do it by myself. Since God help us to be together, to work together, and we can, uh, we can do the job together. So this is a, a blessing for me to be with you. In fact, we have the, the theme for, for this festival. Uh, I shall not be shaken. I was thinking about this theme for the, the festival. You know, in the Bible, there are two groups of people. From Genesis to Revelation, we have two groups of people. One, peop one group, no hope at all. But the other group, they have a hope. And they, they trust the Lord, they have a hope. I read in Jeremiah 17, where we have people that, uh, he said, curse to them that believe in themselves but blessings to them that believe in God two groups of people sometimes it's just like a mystery for you to understand this to believe in yourself or to believe in God to lean on yourself or to lean on God In the gospel of Jesus Christ, I mean, in the gospel you find Luke, Matthew, Mark, and John. Jesus was talking about people that would lean on the walk. You know, uh, 
they, they could have insurance uh, for life. But no insurance at all that could keep you away from dying. Right? No insurance at all could keep you away from dying. You will die anyhow. Somehow. Somewhere. Sometime. But the only insurance is in God. When we read the Bible, it is not just something that we could say, I won't be shaken. I can say this all the time. But what I should do in order not to be shaken sometime soon? We read this in Matthew 7, I think. The foolish people build the house on the sand. And the wise people build the house on the walk. What is the walk then? What is the sand? How we can understand on what you build your, uh, your house. What is the house then? Your life, for example. How, how you are building your life. Every day, we have all kind of difficulties. You know, the work is God. You say, it mentions that in Psalm 62. God is my work. Not anybody can say God is my work. Because not all the people just lean on God. God is not the work. People can say that all the time. But we want not just to say that, we want to, to have God as our work. You agree with me? And when, whenever we have God as our work, you know, in John, the first chapter, he said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, God is the Word. And we need to lean on the Word of God. I mean, uh, live our life according to the Word of God. Do whatever God's Word asks us to do. And this is the way. You know, sand is something that I think I can say sand is like vanity. All things on earth are vanities. You agree with me? We have to live our life. We have to go to school. We have to work. We have to do all kind of stuff. We go to hospital everywhere. But sometimes, you know, when it has to rain, it doesn't matter if you build your house on the rock or on the sand. They should have rain. They should have, you know, a, a storm in life. They should have all kind of things coming. You never know. In life, you never know. But in fact, if you lean on God, if you live your life according to the word of God, if you commit to God to live a life that could please Him every day, because you listen to His word, you obey His word, I'm telling you, whatever come your way, you will just have to lift, lift up your head high up and say, I won't ever be shaken. 
You know? All kind of bad news nowadays. Yes? You are afraid sometimes for everything. You cannot buy yourself. But with the help of God, as our work, as our salvation, as our refuge, you know, you are firm and you are solid. So, I feel free to share this with you. Uh, I know you know that already, but even for myself, I have to renew my commitment every day. Be sure that a uh, yesterday, yesterday night I was talking to a church, the Lighthouse Church, and mentioned that. When I have called from God, I had a call from God, I was a little boy. Who I am today? I was called to be God's servant. God's servant means servant of God's people. Who I am now? I am nothing, just God's servant. A little servant of God. Stay humble. Stay in God's hands and let, it, let Him use me the way He please and to serve His people. And this is the reason why God made a way for me to be with you as a family to be together to share. So, we have different kind of difficulties that we can face. Your trouble up here is not the trouble we have down Haiti. But we all have problems. We all have all, all kinds of difficulties. But when we lean on God, when we lean on His Word, we are sure that we won't ever be shaken. So, you are free to share this to anyone you meet on your way at school, at your college, at work, everywhere, you are free to share this. God is the only one that you can lean on. And He will take care of everything that nobody can take care of. May the Lord bless you all. It was a blessing for me with you. And may God bless you. Thank you for having me here. And God bless you.